Hey everyone, it's Lisa from the blog PharmaSamboon.com and today I'm finally going to be sharing with you a tutorial slash all of our experience with making this antique marble top dresser into a bathroom vanity. This project is one that I knew I wanted to do at least for one or two bathrooms in this house. Now we might end up doing it in a couple other bathrooms if we can find the right pieces, but sometimes size is a concern and you almost have to build something from scratch. But in this particular bathroom, I found the perfect little antique dresser. I believe it was around $250 and it was in my town. And so I thought it was worth giving it a shot because I had looked online for some antique inspired type of vanities and everything, there was just nothing that was authentic looking or had a lot of the character and charm that I was trying to bring to our bathroom renovation that wasn't like a million dollars. Not obviously that much, but. <laughs> now we did end up spending quite a bit of money on this whenever all is said and done, but I'm going to share with you some of the things that we learned that you could probably save money if you knew and then some of the things that we ran into whenever we actually did this. The first thing that we had to figure out was how to get the marble cut. Now I called around to several places in my area and most people, most companies won't actually cut an antique piece of marble. They will only cut marble that they are selling. And so it might be a little bit of digging for you to actually get past this first hurdle. Now I do know of people doing it themselves. I've watched people online doing it themselves. I was worried because the top to this would be very expensive to replace. And so I really didn't want to try that DIY project. I also wanted the marble company to polish it take off any stains and they were able to do all of that. Now, the first time I took the marble off of this vanity and brought it in, I was armed with like all the dimensions of the bottom and how I thought it would go together. And I hadn't purchased a sink. I just, they said that they would have sinks that they could cut this to fit. But when I brought it out of the van, the guy looked at me like I was crazy and said, oh no, 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 that is way too narrow. So he did not like the measurement from here to here because it wouldn't fit a standard sink. He said he didn't have any sinks that would fit underneath of it. And by my calculations, it would have worked just fine. But after considering all that had to be cut and not leaving any spots that were too thin that the marble would crack, he was obviously right, but he didn't offer me any solutions. He basically told me this isn't gonna work you picked the wrong vanity, why don't you just go ahead and use that somewhere else in your house? Now, one solution he did offer me was that you could get a vessel sink. That way you wouldn't have to cut such a large portion of the vanity here. And that would leave enough room to have a nice size sink and still uh, use this marble top. But I just already had my head wrapped around and set on this undermount sink. It's what I envisioned and I wasn't ready to let it go so quickly. Although I have seen some pretty beautiful vanities since where someone used a vessel sink and they did turn out pretty. But that would have required me to choose a vessel sink faucet and change the whole plan. So instead, I actually just looked for a smaller sink. Now to fill you in on the dimensions of the top of this marble top dresser, just so that if you're gonna do a project like this, you could start by getting something that is a little bit deeper. The width across is fine because I only wanted one sink. It was the depth that was the problem. The whole top is 19 inches deep by 40 inches wide. That allowed me to get a sink that the opening dimensions of were 16 inches wide by 11 inches deep. Now this is a lot more narrow than the average undermount sink. And the guy at the marble place said, you can do that, but you probably won't like it. I actually find that it is just fine. Now, if this was like a kitchen sink or something where you would really need to, you know, fit stuff in it, like dishes, it would be too small. But as far as for washing hands and things like that, 
I find that it is just fine and the faucet is able to hit the center here, which were all things that I was concerned about. The reason that you could only get an 11 inch deep sink, even when you have 19 inches of marble to work with, this, these are all things I learned later, are you can't cut too close to any edge or the marble will break. So we had to bring the three faucet holes here in the back out, I think two and a half inches from the back. And then we couldn't start the sink any more than three and a half inches this way because there was this lip underneath of it. So the furniture piece below actually had a lip and I wish that I would have gotten a video of this. And in fact, I might have. It wasn't really a structural lip. It was just a little piece that extended from this side to this side that the drawer went into. So we needed to keep the face of it. We couldn't cut into the face of it, but Luke did cut a little notch out of it so that the sink could go forward as far as possible, but he had to leave the face or you would have seen the damage up here in the front. And so we are able to do that to get as big of a sink as possible, but even still with the overhang of the marble here, we couldn't put it any closer than three and a half inches. So with a 19 inch wide piece of marble, we were able to get this 11 inch in depth under mount sink and it really is just fine now whenever i actually brought the marble i if you are local to me i use a company in st louis called rock solid creations they did a great job but they did actually have me sign something saying that i'd pay regardless because the dimensions that i used were still in their margin of like too thin and they could break and so i was taking that risk but they did a beautiful job and it didn't break and it turned out really pretty. The next thing we had to contend with was the plumbing. Now, what we did was we placed this vanity into the bathroom where we wanted it. We actually moved it out further from the wall. Our last vanity was pushed all the way up against the wall. And because things aren't super straight in an old house, this meant that we had to put this massive caulk line because it wasn't flush against the wall. And so I said, you know what, let's just make it comfortably away from the wall that we can actually clean back there and not push it directly up there. And also we'd have room for the door trim that we wanted the thick, nice door trim next to it. We took out the two bottom drawers so that the plumber could just plumb it in however he saw fit without contending with the drawers. And we decided that we would just rebuild them later. But for the top drawer, we were going to just do the face. So we would take the drawer apart, just fix this face on here and then drop the sink in. But we instead decided that it would be easier to not have to fix it anywhere because there really isn't any support behind it to actually fix this front to. So we just took the drawer and laid it facing up and we just cut a huge swath out of the middle. So we left the sides of the drawer and the front of the drawer, but we just cut like a massive sinkhole. And it didn't need to be pretty or nice because it only needed to basically allow the sink to fit down into it and it would never open up again. It was just going to be like a sink front. That turned out to be a really good idea because whenever the plumber was placing the undermount sink under the marble. It was very heavy and it was hard to get it to be secure. So instead of just caulking it in or whatever they do to fix a sink underneath marble, he actually used those sides that we left on in the front and back that we left on since we just cut the square out of the top drawer and put some two by fours in underneath of the little lips of the sink to provide additional support to keep the sink directly underneath the marble. And so leaving that top drawer somewhat intact actually did allow for further support to keep the sink in place. So he plumbed it with the top drawer in like that so he could utilize the sides for the sink and the marble. Then the other two drawers were completely out. I told Luke, let's just let him plumb it. And then whenever we see where the plumbing actually falls, we'll decide how much needs to come out of the drawers. The goal was to modify the drawers enough that we could still use them for storage, but they would also still fit around the plumbing. Now, when the plumber was here, 
I also realized that there were a few things that I had forgotten to purchase. I had the faucet, the piping underneath didn't need to be anything fancy because it's not exposed, just like PVC and all of that kind of stuff. But I did not have this little stopper. It was just something I forgot about, but it's very important. I found this one on Amazon. It was the same antique brass color as my faucet. It's one that you just push down to stop and then allow the water to drain. And that was something I had to order and then he had to come back to actually do all of the plumbing because I had forgotten about that piece. I will be linking down in the description box below the actual sink and stopper that I purchased in case you wanna recreate a look like this. Now after it was all plumbed and it was caulked, everything was completely in place, the sink, the faucet, everything was working, we rebuilt the drawers. There was the P-trap, and that is, uh, it protruded a little bit more than the bottom. And we could have just cut the drawer off very short in the back. But if we did that, we wouldn't have had any storage at all because it just would have not allowed for any storage baskets to fit. Um, as it stands now, only like small baskets can fit in. So instead we did rebuild the drawer to be a little bit shorter. So we cut the back off the drawer we used some scrap beadboard that we had laying around to make the back. And then we cut an additional notch out of the middle to fit into the P-trap. So the P-trap could fit in perfectly and yet still give us all of that additional storage. Now we do eventually plan to, and this was the plan, we just got busy that day, to build three walls because as it stands now, things can fall out and go down in between that notch into the drawer below it. Now, if we created these three walls that connected to the back of the drawer, that wouldn't happen. It would just be a funny shaped drawer, but it wouldn't have any spots where things could fall out. For the bottom drawer, we only had to cut a little bit off the back of the drawer in order to clear a little bit of plumbing behind it. We didn't have to do the additional notch. And we just put a piece, again, of some scrap beadboard we had laying around on the back so that it would have a drawer back and we could put storage containers, which we did. Now, it actually provides tons of storage. I was a little bit worried with this type of vanity that you know it looks nice but you're not actually able to have any storage like you would with a cabinet but whenever you rebuild the drawers thoughtfully you actually do get quite a bit of storage and i like the drawers because you can organize it with baskets versus like stuff having to stack up i will say there are a few disadvantages one is that, that it's a little bit open while the kids are brushing their teeth they spill water into the drawers and so we have to wipe up inside and that isn't something I'd anticipated. Now if you just keep them all the way shut, that doesn't happen. But of course, sometimes kids use drawers also to uh, reach heights that they can't otherwise reach. And so that is also a thing that does happen. Overall though, I'm very pleased with how this turned out. There were a few hiccups in the process. If I could have found a piece that had a little bit more depth, even just two inches or so, we could have had a standard sink. So if you're looking for something like this, find one that is like 21 inches wide. It might be hard to find. If you can't, just get the smaller sink and you know it'll still turn out really nicely. I'm not saying I would have changed anything. However, that would be the more appropriate thing to do. And then also you could consider doing a vessel sink. I love this beautiful one that is by Victorian by the Bay on Instagram, where she has a antique bowl vessel sink and the high back on it really allowed her to make this vessel sink faucet that came from the top and had a whole lot of charm. On this one, it wouldn't have worked quite like that because I would have had to have just the tall vessel sink faucet behind it versus above it like hers in these photos. But that is another really great idea. And she also did share on her Instagram, I believe this was in her stories and she might have them in her highlights, how she actually made that bowl into a sink, which was so cool. So that's another option, even if you do find something that's super narrow, but it would just be perfect for your space. That's why I wasn't able to give up on this one. I was like, we are going to make this work because it's the perfect size for this space. It, it fits you know, in every direction perfectly. I'm not gonna find anything just like it. So ultimately you can work with and make the piece work. Another great option 
is if something does have doors, it would be a little bit easier to modify versus having to remake drawers. So that's another thing to consider whenever you're looking for something like this. If you can fit all the plumbing on a side where there is a door, that would be a little bit easier, but again, totally doable. I originally picked up this idea from my friend Sarah over at She Holds Dearly. She has this exact same vanity. I saw it and I was like, I'm gonna find a piece to do that exact thing because I just love it. You can find her here on YouTube as well. I will link her down in the description box below. She shares her farmhouse and she shares tours and decor. And she's been on my podcast a couple of times so you can check her out. She has lots of decor tips to share. And um, I wanna give her credit for this beautiful idea that I saw in her home. Actually, I visited her home. I saw the vanity and I was like, that would be so perfect for our bathroom. And so. I wanted to create something very similar and I do love how it turned out. All right, well, thank you so much for watching this video. If you are brand new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I make two new videos every week on food from scratch, natural living, and a handmade home. Also, if you did not yet watch the full bathroom reveal, I will be linking that down in the description box below as well. We transformed this very outdated bathroom into something that was even older uh, that would be more appropriate to the Victorian style of this home. We added a clawfoot tub and flooring and you can check out that whole reveal down in the description box below.